Shalom, everyone. I'm Daniel Joseph, and you're on the Corner Fringe. And today I want to take you back to the book of 2 Kings. And I want to share a story with you in regard to Elisha the prophet and his interaction with a, a woman, a notable woman from Shunem. Typically we call her the Shunammite woman. Well, this woman revered him greatly um, because she was a woman that revered the Lord. And she loved those who loved him. And so she honors the prophet by uh, encouraging her husband to build a small uh, room for him, a small place for him to stay so that when he comes into town that he can turn in and he can stay with them. Uh, over the course of time, the prophet wants to return the favor and uh, do something for her. And uh, she had no son. So ultimately what ends up happening is he ends up prophesying over her, this time next year you're going to embrace a son. And the thought of it was so overwhelming to her. Her response was, do not lie to your maidservant. It was something that meant so much to her. Just the thought of her having a son, this was so deep within her heart that she desired this thing that she is overwhelmed. Well, sure enough, just as the prophet spoke, so it happened. She ends up bearing a son. And over the course of time, unfortunately, her son passes away. Now, I, I don't think there'd be a whole lot of debate in regard to probably the most painful thing anyone can experience in this life is the loss of a child. It's a very, very difficult thing. Well, this woman, upon experiencing the worst of the worst, being in this situation, the way she responds boggles the mind. There is something about this woman, her character, her faith that we need to pick up on. Um, and so just to help you understand this, I want to take you back to 2 Kings. Let's look at this for a little bit. In 2 Kings 4.23 he said, why are you going to him today? Now, the context here is the woman's lost her son. Her husband is wondering why she's going to the prophet Elisha. Now, isn't it weird that she hasn't come to him, broken down before him, weeping as any normal parent would, and saying, our son is no more. Our son is no more. She doesn't say anything about this. This is baffling. And so the husband says, it's neither the new moon nor the Sabbath. As the husband obviously knows there's something. You're going to see Elisha, but this doesn't even make sense. What's going on? And her response to her husband was, it is well. It is well. Now, you look at this in the flesh. I don't care how you cut it. Everything is not well. Everything's the opposite of it is well. And yet this woman in this situation says, no, it is well. She doesn't even tell him about the death of their child. This is incredible, baffling. Then she saddled the donkey and said to her servant, drive, go forward. Do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. And so she departed and went to the man of God at Mount Carmel. So it was when the man of God saw her afar off, that he said to his servant Gehazi, Look, the Shunammite woman, please run now to meet her and say to her, Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Oh, look at this. Is it well with the child? He specifically asks, Is it well for the child? Now here, he's being, she's being approached by the prophet. This is the time, out of any time, that you would say, Oh, yeah, no, it's not well. Everything's horrible. Everything's falling apart in my life. I'm a cursed woman, and I've, I've, I've lost my son. She doesn't say any of that. What she says is, it is well. And you think of the song, it is well with my soul. How can she do this? How can she say this? She has something that I want. She has something that you should want right now now as you peel back layers to this it gets interesting when you look at this in the hebrew here we have it is well three simple words beautiful words songs have been written based upon these three words in the hebrew it's just one word in the hebrew it's shalom 
And shalom means it is well. It means well-being. It means peace. This woman, in the face of all adversity, as this woman is literally sitting in the valley of the shadow of death, she's telling her husband, she is telling the prophet, I have peace. I have peace. How does she have peace? And where does this peace come from? How in the world could she acquire such a peace? Well, the prophet Paul, it's interesting, in Philippians 4, 6, he says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And look at this. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to stop right here. This is what the woman has. She has a peace that surpasses all understanding. This story of the Shunammite woman doesn't make any sense. Her, her response of, it's shalom. I have shalom. All is well. It is well. It doesn't make any sense. Because it is a shalom that surpasses understanding. Again, I ask the question, where does this come from? Well, Paul goes on and says, Well, guard your hearts and minds through Messiah Yeshua. So where does this come from? Where does this kind of peace that surpasses all understanding? It comes through the Messiah Yeshua. Yeshua says this in John 16, 33, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In me you will have. So where do we get this peace that this Shunammite woman has? It's in Yeshua. It's in the Savior, the Redeemer, the hope of Israel. It's in Him. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Have shalom because He's overcome it. I'm telling you right now, this Shunammite woman knew this. She had a peace that surpassed all understanding. She had perfect clarity because she knew the Lord. And I would argue she knew Yeshua. She knew him. And only through this valley of shadow of death, only through him could she possibly have this kind of peace. Paul says to Ephesians, for he, meaning Yeshua himself, is our peace. He is our peace. Absence from him is what? It's the opposite of shalom. It is fear. It is anxiety. It is depression. It is all of these things where these things have a crippling effect on mankind. You know, the reality is, is when we're dealing with things, and these are things that I've been in my own life that I've had to be confronted with, when you have the sorrow of the world, when you're dealing with depression, when you're dealing with anxieties, these are flags. These are symptoms of a problem. And the problem is, is we're not in right relationship with the Lord. When Yeshua is literally living with inside our hearts and we have a peace that surpasses all understanding. When the cares of the world start to engulf us and worries start to consume us, something is wrong. This is a flag. You you need to pick up on this. I, I cannot overemphasize this point enough. It's telling you something in your relationship is fractured with the Lord. You're not where you need to be. Your focus is not right. He's not fully living in your heart. You have not fully submitted and fully trusted in him. How is it that Paul and Silas can be thrown in jail for not doing anything but sharing the love of Yeshua? That's what they did. They shared the love of Yeshua. How is it that they can be thrown into prison, chained, and they're not told beforehand, don't worry about it. You're only going to be in there for a day or two. Everything's going to be fine. They're not told anything. They know they do not know the outcome. And they're in prison and they're singing psalms and hymns. How in the world can these men be in the epitome of the shadow of death and rejoicing in the Lord? Because they had shalom. They had a peace that surpassed all understanding. For them, it is well. 
it was well because they had they were in relationship with the lord yeshua was living in their heart they relied they trusted in him their circumstances didn't define who they were rather it's the exact opposite the peace that they had in yeshua defined the circumstances they were experiencing in other words those things didn't have power over them and so i'm, I'm going to say if, if you're struggling with anxieties and fears and depressions and certain situations that have been horrible in your lifetime that have happened to you have plagued you have brought you into bondage I am telling you right now, you got to run to the peace that surpasses all understanding. You got to go to the Sar Shalom, to the Prince of Peace. And until he, you allow him to dwell within you, you're going to be plagued by these things. You know, it's sad to me because, you know, we're treating symptoms today. You know, when we, when we have anxiety or we, we have depression, we start popping pills. Some people go to the bottle. We're treating symptoms. We're not going to the problem. If you, if you really want to deal with the pain and the suffering, cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. But you must first believe it. You must first actually believe it to give him your heart fully. And when you do, he will fill you with shalom. You will be able to say things that absolutely baffle people's minds. Your response to horrible things that happen in your life will baffle people's minds because in their minds, they're like, you should be falling apart right now, not singing hymns and songs, not rejoicing. Uh, and I think of Job who lost his family. He lost everything he had, and he comes back. Though, make no mistake, every cell in his body is feeling the weight of it. And that pain, he comes back and says, Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm telling you right now, that's what I want. I want what Job had. I want what this Shunammite woman has. I want this peace, knowing that we're getting into dark days right now. Times that are pure evil. They are vile. We need this peace. We need to have the joy of the Lord, but we can't have that by going to the bottle. We can't have that by popping pills. The pills aren't going to make us happy, with all due respect. Not even money. And people keep saying, I've heard this so many times, if I just had this much money, if I just had this uh, living standard, if I was just in this car, if I just had this, no, 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 you need Jesus. That's what you need. You need you need something that passes all understanding. You need to have power. You need to have that love. You need to feel that compassion in your heart so that you can give it. Then you will have a peace. Your situation won't matter because your king's alive, because Yeshua is on the throne. The prince of peace is on the throne. I want to take you to the book of Isaiah because there's another aspect of this peace. Uh pun intended that we need to get the peace if you will isaiah 48 18 oh that you had heeded my commandments then your peace would have been like a river and your righteousness like the waves of the seas i grew up singing this song in, in sunday school right you know peace like a river you know peace like a river in my soul where do i get that peace how do I obtain that in this dark and vile and painful world filled with sorrow and iniquity? Where do I get that? I get that from Yeshua, and I get that by keeping Yeshua's commandments, by walking in his commandments. Then I will have peace like a river. I'm going to tell you this right now, uh, a confession moment, if you will. My life, when, when I'm feeling the most stressed and I'm feeling the most anxiety and depression starts to sink in, I can tell you I, there's something wrong with my relationship with the Lord. And when I realize it, you get it back in line when you realize, you know what, I'm not doing the things I need to be doing. Or let's talk about bitterness and unforgiveness. You want something to plague your very being, to open up all sorts of doors to pandemonium in your life? Just hang on to that plague. Hang on to bitterness and to anger and watch what it does. It will consume you. The only person you're harming is yourself. It will consume you. You will not have any peace. 
You know why? You're not keeping the commandments. We're supposed to forgive others as we have been forgiven, right? This is what we're supposed to do. This is what we're supposed to go out and show. But I can't do that. I can't show forgiveness. I can't be merciful. I can't have love for my neighbor unless I have Yeshua living in my heart, the peace that passes all understanding. Unless I'm going to walk out his commandments, only then do the doors open to freedom and to liberty. You know, it could be other commandments as well. It doesn't matter what it is. If you're taking the Lord's name in vain, if you're not honoring your mother and father, if you're not doing these things, you're going to have anxiety. You're going to open the doors up for all sorts of misery. You'll never have peace. Because peace like a river comes through obedience. Peace like a river comes because you have Yeshua in your heart. And I'm going to close with this. Revelation 12, 17, And the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of the Messiah Yeshua. Where do we get peace? It's in these very things. It's in these things. It's when I keep his commandments. It's when I testify, I call, and I believe in the Son of God, in the Messiah Yeshua. Then I can have this shalom. Then and only then can I possibly understand this story of the Shunammite woman where she's able to say, it is well. Well, that's all for today. Have a blessed week and be diligent to find that peace. Shalom. Oh, <laughs>